OBS is the gift that keeps on giving. It's so chock full of functionality and features that you could spend days going through all the different settings and still not know everything about it. Or to save time, you could watch a YouTube video and learn some new things about OBS in under 14 minutes. See where I'm going with this? My name's Danny and I stream over on twitch.tv slash dannyvals. I've been streaming for a while now and in my time I've learned a few little secrets about OBS that people just don't seem to talk about. So today I have for you nine more things that OBS can do that you probably didn't know about. If this is your first time on this channel, welcome. I regularly drop videos full of tips and tricks for streaming, so why not subscribe? And if you want to watch the first part of this video series, you can click the card just up here. So, have you ever had it when you're in the middle of a stream with just a few chatters and someone says, is the stream down for anyone else? And you're thinking, oh no, is it them or is it me? Well, one thing that might be able to tell you is the stats doc. When some people stream to Twitch or Kick or YouTube, they like to have a window open showing their stream at all times, just so they can keep an eye on things. The problem is, this only really tells you if your stream is down or buffering, doesn't really tell you much else. Instead, OBS has a built-in way of monitoring your stream's health, including vital info such as your CPU usage and your memory. If we go up here to Docs and then press Stats, we get access to the Stats Doc, which gives us a whole bunch of useful information about how our stream is performing. Over on the right, we have our frame rate, how long it takes to render each frame, as well as information about how many frames we're not able to save due to rendering or encoding lag. At the bottom, we can see if any frames are being dropped because of our network connection, and we can also see exactly how much data we're sending and how fast we're sending it. In the top left, we can see how much disk space is left and how much longer we can record for until the disk is full. Finally, we can see how much CPU and RAM OBS is using, which can be super useful for troubleshooting performance issues. What you can then do with your dock is take it and put it anywhere you like. So I like to have it just here in the middle so it's nice and easily visible. This next feature is a great way to increase the production value of your stream. It's source transitions. There are loads of different tools that streamers can use to move sources around on their stream, such as Atom, Streamerbot, and Sammy, just to name a few. But OBS itself does have its own way of showing and hiding sources nicely, so you don't have to have things just pop in and pop out instantly. On this BRB scene, I want to show words on stream when I'm AFK, so that viewers still have some engaging content whilst I'm not at my desk. One way to do this would be to have the words on stream browser source behind my webcam, so that when I leave my desk, I can just press webcam, hide. Of course, this is a hard cut, it's a little bit jarring. So to improve this, we can use source transitions. If I right click this webcam source, I can go into high transition and there are a few different options here. I tend to use either fade or slide, but have a play around and see what works for you. Here I'm gonna press slide. I'm gonna set it to slide down and press okay. I then want to set the timing so that it takes 1500 milliseconds for the entire effect to complete. Now when I press hide, I slide away nicely. I'm going to apply the same thing for the show transition. So I'm going to slide, but this time go up, press OK. And once again, set it to 1500 milliseconds. Then when I show myself, I slide in nicely and it's just much more pleasing on the eye. This next feature was kindly pointed out by Geordie Carrigan 926 and it's process priority. If you're running a lower end machine, you might sometimes see your stream stutter, even though the game seems to be running absolutely fine or maybe your game does run fine until the moment you start streaming. If either of these happen to you, you might want to look at adjusting the process priority in OBS in order to allocate more or less of your CPU to OBS related tasks. In order to set the process priority, we simply need to go down here into our settings and go to advanced. Here in the general section, we see the process priority is set to normal and we can set it anywhere from high to idle. Lowering the process priority of OBS ensures that it uses fewer CPU resources and raising it means that OBS will take priority over other games and apps that may be running. It's important to strike the right balance here, so make sure you do plenty of testing. In this video, I show how to do a test stream without actually going live to your audience. So if you want to find out how to do that, click into the video and you want to tip 8, test your stream. The section you want starts at around 1553. Next up, we have the stream delay. Now most streamers probably want there to be as little delay as possible between them and their chat. So you're probably thinking, well, what's the point in adding a delay? Well, I've seen a few interesting use cases for this. Firstly, and probably most obviously, is to prevent stream sniping. If you're playing a competitive game such as Fortnite or Valorant or Counter-Strike, or really anything where other players knowing your location puts you at a disadvantage, adding a couple of seconds of stream delay makes it harder for people to use your stream against you. Another way I've seen a stream delay used to great effect is when my friend Reckless runs his game show. In it, eight players have to answer trivia questions to defeat bosses and win cash prizes. It's really cool. 
obviously, a trivia quiz is reliant on the contestants on the answers, not the audience. And in some of the earliest episodes of the game show, sometimes an over-eager audience member would just start typing the answers into chat. Of course, if any of the contestants had chat open at the time, it puts other players at a disadvantage. So to address this, Reckless introduced a small stream delay. This effectively removed audience interference from the equation, keeping things nice and fair. To add a stream delay, once again we go into our settings and go to advance. From there we scroll down into the stream delay section, press enable and set a duration. Depending on your use case you can set this higher or lower. Just bear in mind that this uses up a little bit of your RAM, so don't go crazy and set it to something like 10 minutes. About 30 to 60 seconds is probably about right for most use cases. On the topic of delays, there might be circumstances where you want to introduce an audio delay using a sync offset. If you're using a physical camera for your webcam, such as a DSLR, and you're capturing the webcam's feed using a capture card, there's a chance the audio and your video might be slightly out of sync. Even the best capture cards in the world will introduce a small delay, and you might see this on some webcams too. If you want to make sure that your mouth movements match your audio, and you don't want to look like a bad kung fu movie from the 80s, you should try adding a sync offset. To add a sync offset, we just need to go into the advanced audio properties of our microphone. This will open up a panel where we can see all sorts of different properties, but the one we're interested in is of course the sync offset. You can set this to a positive or negative number, depending on if it's your microphone or your webcam that's introducing the delay. I'm using a Sony webcam going through an Elgato cam link. So for me, I find about 100 milliseconds is about right. Now when I speak, everything lines up well and it looks really natural. While we're talking audio, there are a number of really cool ways you can change how an audio source sounds using VSTs. VSTs are plugins that modify, enhance, or otherwise manipulate audio in real time. And I've seen some great uses of this. You can make it sound like you've just inhaled a healing balloon. Or spontaneously become Mr. Blobby. Or even just become pure evil. Which, let's face it, Mr. Blobby is. He's not from this dimension. While OBS supports VSTs out of the box, it doesn't actually come with any pre-installed, so you'll need to source them for yourself. I highly recommend Replugs from Reaper, which you can get from this link here, and I've shared it in the description. This doesn't just let you do silly voices, though. This allows you to add EQ, compression, reverb, and a whole lot more. If we go over to the website, we can scroll down here, and we're going to download the 64-bit version. Once you've read the license agreement, press I agree, and then we can choose which of the plugins we want to install. Now, the entire package is actually very, very small, so you can install as many or as few as you want, but the key one here is ReJS, so make sure that's installed. I'm going to press next and then install. Now over in OBS, we can go into our microphone audio source and then press filters. From here, we can press the plus button and add a new VST filter. Give this a name that makes sense, such as what the effect is actually doing, be it pitch up, modulation, etc. And then it's just a case of picking a VST to apply. Once you've picked your plugin, just go ahead and open up the plugin interface to configure what you want it to do. I won't go into the details of each plugin option because that could be a 50 minute video of its own, but go into load and pick an effect to apply. Once you have one, just need to change the settings to your needs. This is a really popular VST, so if you need any extra details or any extra guidance, a YouTube search is a great place to start. Once you're happy with everything, we can close this off and then to enable or disable the effect, we simply need to click on this eye icon here. What I'd recommend is setting it to a hotkey so you can enable it or disable it really quickly in the middle of a stream. This next feature is fantastic for accessibility and inclusion, and it's a great way of making sure that people can enjoy your content even when they can't listen to it. This is auto captioning. Auto captioning used to require extra work and third party plugins, but now it's built directly into OBS. All you need to do is enable it, and then when you speak, your words are automatically transcribed. Now this is an experimental feature, so it's subject to change and instability, but in my experience, it works pretty well. All we need to do is go up here into the tools and press captions experimental. We choose what source to listen to, so here I'm just going to pick Mike Orcs. And then the language and provider, there's only a single option, so you don't need to worry about configuring those. Then we press enable, press OK, and that's it. For feature number eight, we have audio ducking. In OBS, there are a few different ways of making sure that your microphone is always louder than your gameplay, but the way that ducking works is by reducing the volume of one audio source whilst another audio source is active. I think we've all seen streams where the streamer is talking, but the game's just too damn loud. If that streamer were to use audio ducking instead, as they speak, the game volume would reduce. And when they stop talking, the game volume would go back to normal. To set up audio ducking, we need to go into the filters of the source that we want to make quieter. So here I'm gonna pick my desktop audio, go to filters, and then we're gonna add a new compressor. Call it whatever you like, and then press OK. And now you'll see there are a few different options available to us. First, we have ratio. This is how much compression is applied to the audio source, whilst the threshold here is hit. The higher the ratio, the more compression is applied. Threshold is at what audio level do you want the compression to kick in? So anything louder than this volume will be compressed. 
Attack is how quickly the compressor responds to audio above this volume level. Release is how quickly the compressor uncompresses your audio once it's below the threshold. Output gain adjusts the overall output volume once that compression is applied. And sidechain slash ducking source is what audio source to listen to in order to trigger the compression. So let's get this set up. Bear in mind these are settings that work for me. You're probably going to have to experiment for yourself and see what works for you. So I'm going to set my sidechain slash ducking source to my microphone. And the ratio here is going to be set to 8. Of course, if you want your gain volume to be lowered more, we set this higher. If you want it to be lowered less, set this lower. Threshold should be set fairly low so that it triggers when you're speaking at a normal volume. So for me, this is going to be minus 40 decibels. Of course, your microphone might be more or less sensitive than mine. I'm going to set the attack here to 250 milliseconds. So when I start speaking, it's going to take a quarter of a second for the game to reduce in volume. I'll set the release to be 1000 milliseconds. So after I stop talking, the game's going to take a second to return to full volume. And as for output gain, we're actually going to leave this alone. Now, I'm not going to share the audio because copyrights, but I'm listening to music right now. And you'll notice as I speak, this has reduced in volume. But once I stop speaking, there we go. Of course, you might want to apply this same audio ducking to other audio sources. And a quick way of doing this would be to copy the filter. So I'm going to go into my desktop audio filters and then I can right click the compressor and press copy. I then press close, go into a different audio source such as this primary webcam here and go into filters. Then we just need to right click our audio slash video filters, press paste, and then the compressor is applied to that source too. As I say, these are the settings that work for me. Your setup is going to be unique. So make sure you do plenty of recording, plenty of testing and find out what works best for you. Finally, something I've seen used in a bunch of really cool and interesting ways is custom browser docs. OBS gives you the ability to embed any web page as a doc, be it an external website or a local HTML file. I've seen people use this to embed their YouTube subscriber accounts, so they can keep an eye on that, or embed a Discord channel so they can see any comments in the moderator section, or even just embed a live preview of their stream. Let's say for instance though that we stream to Twitch, and we want to see at all times what prediction is currently running. We just need to go up into Docs and select Custom Browser Docs. Each doc will need a name and a URL. So here you can see I've got the Sammy Bridge and the URL is C, Users, Danny, etc. This is a locally hosted HTML file. Our Twitch predictions though will give the name of predictions and the URL is as follows. I'll pop this in the video description as well. Once we press apply, you'll see the Twitch login page. And once I'm logged in, all I need to do is grab this doc and place it anywhere I like on OBS. So I'm gonna embed it here on the left hand side. Now we're gonna close this off. And now when I'm streaming at all times, I can see what the current prediction is. And that is it. That is nine more things that OBS can do that you probably didn't know about. I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who subscribed off the back of the first OBS features video. The response was huge and I really appreciate all the comments and the messages. I hope this video has been just as helpful. As always, do drop me a comment if you want to let me know what you thought of this video and feel free to share your own OBS tips. And hey, if you've learned even one thing from this video, that deserves a like, right? If you want to watch another video, you can click right here. I've been Danny. I'll catch you on the next one.